Hey there, booze fans. We are back with another single barrel. Yay! This time from our friends at Smooth Ambler, located in West Virginia. Smooth Ambler was first introduced to me by a customer who said, you got to try this. Well, I did try it, and I liked it so much that I started to work hard to get it into the state. Once they got into the state, I found out that they had single barrel. Okay, so I bought every single case that I could and built a huge display of it. And we had John, the owner, come in and uh, pour. He was the first master distiller to come to the store. I invited many, but he was the first one to accept the invitation. We had a great time. A lot of people got turned on to this, and we blew through that. Oh, and then it got Whiskey Advocates Bourbon of the Year. So things really took off for them. They got uh, purchased by Pernod Ricard, and so immediately vanished from shelves in uh, sad little states like South Carolina, but they're back now, and... Uh, um, he basically got caught with his pants down. He wasn't ready for the level of success that he achieved so quickly, and he blew through his inventory, but he didn't want to compromise, so he had to buy this time, and now he's back, and you can find the regular old scout on shelves where the liquor buyer knows what they're doing. They also make the wonderful contradiction. Um, <clears throat> big level is their weeder. Uh, not my cup of tea, but some people really love it. Very divisive whiskey for whatever reason. And so John drove up with some samples, and um, we went through them. And this one just just grabbed me the way that uh, when you're lucky, sometimes they do. I named it Brown Sugar Baby because it tastes like baked brown sugar. Uh, so Brown Sugar Baby, the way I hear it is Brown Sugar Baby. That's how it pops in my head. You don't have to say it like that. But if you hear me talking about it tomorrow, there's a 110% chance I'll refer to it uh, like that a few times. It's cast strength, just the way I like it. Came in at 113 proof. It's five years old. Um, you can panic about that if you like. Um, personally, I think that, you know... Uh, having a whiskey be 10 years old or six years old or whatever the age it's just a number it doesn't signify quality um <clears throat> there are whiskeys that are very very young and have not lost that green hay taste and i can't stand those there are people that like them but i can't stand those but one of my all-time favorite whiskeys is octomore uh, from brooklotti and that's three years old so you know, judge it by the contents. All right, let's get to it. <clears throat> so, once again, using my Glen Cairn glass, uh, that's my preferred um, tasting glass, and it's also the glass I use to choose this barrel. So, it's coming home of sorts. Now you see the nice amber color there, not super dark because it's five years old, but still. Still a beautiful golden color there. All right, let's get the schnoz in there and see what this guy's all about. Oh, my. That's just big, fat, brown sugar and molasses. And some baking spices on the back. Very inviting. All right, first sip. Great viscosity, good mouthfeel, coats the tongue nicely, and there it is, big, fat, baked brown sugar. It's right there. Now, people worry when I say things like that, it's like, is it too sweet? No, it's not a, it's not a dessert. They didn't add brown sugar to it. That is simply the way that the whiskey has interacted with that particular barrel. Okay, so yes, you get big brown sugar, but it's 113 proof, so it gets dried out real fast. 
right? This is not a dessert wine. This is not a dessert bourbon. So when I say things like vanilla bomb, right? I name single barrels chocolate bar. If you were to switch from this to Bailey's, for example, you'd be like, oh my God, no, that's sweet. So it's a strong tasting note. They do not add any extra sugar or flavorings or anything like that. This is just the interaction that was created by this whiskey and this barrel. And the whole beauty of the single barrel is that these have distinctive taste profiles. And then on top of that, when I'm selecting, I'm always trying to find a barrel that has a signature. Okay. Now, I didn't pick the pickle just because it was weird. I really liked it. But at the same time, it has a really unique signature, one that I had never had before. And this had has such a strong baked brown sugar. It, it's like the top layer of the coffee cake, right? With the butter and the brown sugar on top, but with none of the coffee cake. It's just like you're just eating that, you know, that brown sugar crust. And it's, it's really, it's wonderful. I'm very thankful um, for this relationship and for this opportunity and for you guys to be able to come and snag one, which I recommend doing very quickly as um, <clears throat> almost all of our single barrels just bounce right out of there. Um, there's still some pickle left. We're down to about four cases. There is still some town branch. That's about 75% gone. Um, and so this will be in the booze letter tomorrow. And it's always hard to say. Will there be a mad dash, you know, um, or not? I know that people should be excited about it uh, because at $60, this is just a, a tremendous buy. You're getting a cast drink single barrel bourbon that's absolutely delicious for 60 bucks um i bought one i uh i'll probably be buying a second one that's my limit i never i never buy more than two bottles of my own barrel and i only buy one bottle of everything else i'm one and done except for the rotation now i'm rambling on anyway back to work for me Thank you for watching, and uh, I hope to see you at the store. Cheers.